Hi, today I'm going to talk about engraving my Final Fantasy VII Rebirth tumblers on the rotary attachment of my We Create Vision laser cutter. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And when I did my review of the We Create Vision diode laser cutter, I promised I would do a separate video about installing and using the rotary attachments. So that's what I'm going to do here today. And I had a really great opportunity because I've just finished playing the uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is the middle installment of a trilogy of games that are recreating the classic Final Fantasy VII. And those characters were very much in my head while I was doing this, so I decided to use them as the subjects for my engraving project. Now, I ordered a set of eight inexpensive powder-coated tumblers on Amazon because I didn't want to uh, practice using my beloved Yeti uh, tumblers and mugs. But... I did in the end do one of my Yetis and the exact same settings that I finally settled on for this set of, of tumblers worked perfectly for this even though uh, the powder coating is clearly about twice as thick as it is for the less expensive versions. So I used uh, Photoshop and uh, to prepare the images that I used and then I ran them through the image trace in Adobe Illustrator. and. I'll show you that process. And then I used the Make It software from Free From We Create to actually run the whole rotary process. I'll tell you that the installation of the rotary attachment was pretty straightforward and easy to do. Frankly, the hardest part was there, were, there are two bolts that you have to remove before you can then install the rotary attachment and getting those off was the hardest part. I got a little help with that, but other than that, it was very straightforward and easy to do. And the software is very straightforward as well, and I'll show you that whole process. Um, I did have to go up a learning curve on settings that ended up that using the 100% power and the 250 millimeters per second, which is the basically the highest recommended speed, was the best setting, and it worked for all of these. Um, I did the whole eight from the pack, and so there were high contrast ones, like these very dark ones, that turned out very well. But also I did this very subtle silver on silver, which turned out to be one of my favorites. It's very sophisticated. It's just a textured silver uh, surface, and then the engraving is shiny. So that's, I really love that. So I'll show you the whole process from uh, preparing the images and uh, installing the attachment and using it with the Make It software. But before I get to the details, if this video is helpful to you, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on your notifications so you know when I post something new. So let's start with preparing the images. I look online and I'm looking for something that has an isolated figure with either a transparent or a white background. This particular one of Cloud has a transparent background. I want to turn that white, so I'm going to get the paint bucket and make sure that it's pure white, and I'm going to just fill the background in with that. The next thing I want to do is I want to use that white background as a way to select the entire background first, and then I'm going to invert that so that instead of having the background selected, I have the image selected, the character and then I say OK. So now I want to put in a fill layer over that selection. And I'm just going to make that fill layer all black. So with the color picker, I go into the very corner to get pure black. And now basically I have a silhouette. The only thing I need to do now is to export that as a PNG. Now, I mentioned in my intro that my normal process is that I then take that into Illustrator to do an image trace. But the truth is now, with the newest version of the We Create Make It software, you can do all of that inside their software. So let's run a quick simulation in the Make It software. You say this is a cylindrical project. You put in either the perimeter or the diameter. It calculates the other one. 
And then it puts up this work area and you see there's a part there where you're not allowed to place your image. So I open the materials list and pick the stainless steel tumbler with black powder coating. I pick the upper right hand corner which is the cleanest cut and that puts the settings in for me. Now I'm going to upload not an SVG which is what I normally use. I'm just going to put in a PNG like the one we just made and it says it's bigger than the area. Do you want me to fit it automatically? You confirm that you want that and it places it for you. If you click on that image, it says that it's a bitmap engrave, which is a little bit different. Uh, it's essentially the same thing, but it's normally called a fill engrave. It's going to engrave the black part of the image. It's going to ignore the white. And if you just click on sketch, you get some settings you can play with. But if you take the defaults, it's doing an image trace for you. And if you click on that orange line, you see that it's got engrave, uh, it's vector engraving, and it puts in some settings for that. But you could also pick fill engrave, and it would do exactly everything I'm doing in Illustrator. While we're here, though, let's take a look at these material settings. So when you pick stainless, it says red, black, blue, and then just stainless steel generic. The upper right-hand corner for the black and the blue is 250 millimeters per second and 100% power, and my testing shows that's what you need to actually engrave the powder coat. The red one, though, says 100 millimeters per second, which is slower, 100% power, but that creates too much smoke and it discolors the stainless steel underneath. The settings for the generic stainless steel are 50 millimeters per second, slower yet, but only 50% power, and in the end, I didn't even bother to try this one because I found that 250 millimeters, 100% power worked on everything. So here are the five characters or images I created, one for Cloud, one for Aerith, and then this is Sephiroth, who is the villain. This is the meteor, which is part of the logo. And this is the 25th anniversary logo, and I liked it because it had a lot of uh, white inside of it. But what you have to remember is that what is black here in the shadows is actually the shiny stainless steel when you engrave it. And so you have to look at an inverted image and say, does it really read well in this format? And the truth is, it's a lot harder to see the faces when it's inverted. And it didn't help that I actually engraved it on the tumbler upside down. You'll understand why that happened a little bit later. Here's what it takes to install the rotary attachment. The first thing you do is you take the two knife blade beds out. Here's where we remove the two bolts, and you have to be careful to not strip those. And then there's another hole here in the center, which is used, there's a pin in the bottom of the rotary attachment that slides in, into the hole. That ensures it's aligned, and then you put the two bolts back in. It's a little tricky because it's so close to the attachment itself. The jig for holding your item can either go outside the item or inside the opening. The rotary's cable has this little uh, indentation on the right hand side so you just align it and plug it into this very obvious place where it's supposed to be plugged in. Do this while the machine is off. You open and close the jig using this chuck key. And there are three holes where you put this in and you need to tighten in all three of the holes. That's what ensures that the jig has been contracted evenly. I found it was easiest for me to work from the right side of the machine through this whole process. Now you need to support the other end of the item and this device lets you screw it up to the point where it's supporting, in my case, the top of the tumbler because only the bottom fit into the jig. My first test run was of the Meteor on the black tumbler and it worked great because those settings are good settings. 250 millimeters per second, 100 percent power. Very little smoke. This is pretty much how it looked coming out of the machine. The second tumbler was a pink one, so I used the red tumbler settings, and it didn't look very good while it was engraving, and in fact when I cleaned it up it wasn't. As I got more experience, what I started to look for is a bright line the, that the most uh, recent engraving line should be bright. It happens because it's nice, clean, shiny stainless steel before it's been covered with smoke. And when I didn't see this line, I did not end up with a good result. Once I was comfortable with the settings, I was ready to try a Yeti. 
So here's the full process while connected to the machine. You say it's a new project. You say it's a cylindrical uh, rotary project. You put in either the diameter or the perimeter. It will calculate the other one. You select the material, and I'm going to pick stainless steel and the red tumbler. This will pop up a matrix of speeds and power, but I know I'm going to have to override the speed setting. The tumbler looks too small, so I click the refresh button and it uh, gets a new picture from the camera. I've decided to run a little test on the back side of the tumbler by just putting uh, FF7 for Final Fantasy VII on uh, in a place that's inconspicuous. I use the text tool, I make the text smaller. I need to rotate this because remember my tumbler is in upside down. So I'm looking everywhere for the rotation tool because I know it's supposed to be on the bar up here but I can't see it. But I have my window smaller because I'm recording this with a recording screen recording tool. So I have to expand the window to full size to get the rotation tool to appear and I say flip it 180 degrees and then I go back so that you can see the full screen. So just remember if ever you can't find something maybe it's because your window is too small. But anyway I'm gonna pick this to fill and grave and I'm gonna put in the settings that I know should work. 100% power and 250 millimeters per second. And then you click Start, and instead of autofocus, what it does is measures the diameter of the cylinder. And it does this with the, the same autofocus tool, but it's moving up and down a little bit to estimate the diameter and verify the settings you've put in. And then you say Send, and you need to push the button on the We Create. So that's a pretty simple process, and here it is engraving. But I do want to point out that <laughs> this is not the location that it, it showed us on the screen. It's actually much closer to the Yeti logo and it's actually where I want it to be, um, but it is not consistent with the picture we saw. While the engraving's going on, back on the screen we see a process bar and once again you'll see how far away the, the FF7 is from the logo in that picture. The results though are as clean as the professional Yeti logo. So I rotated the jig so that the top or the front of the tumbler is up. And now I'm going to engrave my Aerith image. So I position it in this, the working area on the tumbler. And I get the settings right, 100 and 250. I hit the refresh on the camera just to make sure I have really the best picture available for placement. Then I do start and measure the diameter of the cylinder and then I send the job to the machine. This is going to take just under three minutes to engrave. This placement is very true to the picture we saw from the camera and it's beautiful. The engraving is really nice. The cloud image on this dark tumbler uh, worked very well. Sephiroth on this uh, dark green worked nicely as well. As I mentioned, I forgot to do the 180 degree rotation on this 25th anniversary logo. I'll hold it upside down so we can look at it. Um, it's interesting, but it needs some more work. I didn't really know what to expect when I was going to do this silver textured uh, tumbler, but I thought, gee, I should give it a try. And this is what it looks like while it's engraving. No smoke at all, virtually no cleanup required, and I think it looks great. I really like this silver on silver effect. I was hoping for the same thing from this rose gold uh, tumbler. You see it's shiny though, it has like a clear coat over the coloring. Looks the same engraving, no smoke, but when you see the final result, the combination of the both being shiny, so no contrast in that, and then a little bit of darkening of the metal itself. It's just too hard to see. Engraving the powder coat is a really smelly process, even with this uh, We Create fume extractor. I cleaned all of the tumblers just using this Dawn Power Wash that I use in my sink every day. And I'm really happy with this project. I like the result, and it's a great 
a capability to have added to my workshop. I have lots of other great laser cutter projects in the works. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.